Less than two decades ago, the ground began to split open in Africa, with fractures opening up across different countries, even splitting a man's house into two. Since then, it's been obvious that Africa is undergoing a continental rift. Such a rift occurs when a continent is set to break into two or more. When this happens, new continents, islands, and oceans will be formed, and our world will never be the same again. Why is Africa splitting up? What is causing the land to be cut open? What is the implication on Africans and the world in general? Join us in this video as we discuss how Africa is splitting into two continents, and most people don't even know about it. In 2005, images and reports began to emerge of a continental rift happening in East Africa. A continental rift is a term given to situations where a continent seems to be breaking apart or separating into two or more. This is a normal occurrence everywhere in the world. In fact, every single continent in our world today came as a result of rifts and shifting of tectonic plates. To understand what's happening in Africa, you need to understand what happened hundreds of millions of years ago. The planet Earth was just a singular solid piece of land surrounded by a single body of water. It was just one continent called Pangaea and one ocean called Pantalassa. Over the next million years, the Earth's outer crust got heated and cooled and broke up and apart into what we see today. This is what led to the formation of continents, islands, oceans, and seas. Although it might look like the Earth is stationary, the Earth is actually in a constant state of movement and change. The Earth's crust, which is sometimes referred to as the lithosphere, is what you and I stand on every day. This lithosphere is made up of about 15 to 20 tectonic plates that are constantly moving apart or toward each other. These plates are the large land masses that form the different continents and islands. When you think of these plates, think of them as pieces of a cracked shell that lay on the extremely hot sea of melted rock inside our planet's core. These plates are constantly moving, sometimes towards or away from each other. This movement is referred to as plate motion or tectonic shift. Have you ever noticed how South America's east coast and Africa's west coast fit together when you look at a globe? They actually were once together. According to NASA's Earth Observatory, the Somalian plate in the east is moving eastward away from the larger and older part of the continent, the Nubian plate. The Somalian plate is sometimes referred to as the Somali plate, while the Nubian plate is sometimes called the African plate. Interestingly, both the Somalian and Nubian plates are also moving away from the Arabian plate in the north. These plates all meet in the Afar region of Ethiopia, forming a Y-shaped rift system, according to the Geological Society of London. This separation of the Somalian plate from the Nubian plate is also known as the East African Rift. The East African Rift is a network of valleys that stretches about 2,175 miles long from the Red Sea to Mozambique. If the Somalian tectonic plate does detach itself completely from the larger Nubian plate, the result will be the splitting of the world's second largest continent in two. This would be an exciting phenomenon for geologists and every other scientist, as there's been nothing close to this since South America and Africa were divided into different continents hundreds of millions of years ago. However, if it does happen, it cannot happen in our lifetime, as it would take about 5 to 10 million years for there to be a clean separation. A clean breakaway of the Somalian plate from the Nubian plate might not be the only possible scenario here. One possibility is having most of the Somalian plates separated from the rest of the continent. This partial separation will lead to the formation of a new seed between the two land masses. This new land mass will include Somalia, Eritrea, Djibouti, and the eastern parts of Ethiopia, Kenya, Tanzania, and Mozambique. There is also the possibility of only eastern Tanzania and Mozambique separating. Countries that will benefit from this rift are those that are currently landlocked, like Ethiopia and Uganda. The introduction of a coastline from the emergence of a new ocean will improve their economy greatly with new opportunities for trade and production. According to Ken McDonald, a marine geophysicist and a professor emeritus at the University of California, Santa Barbara, the Gulf of Aden and the Red Sea will flood in over the Afar region and into the East African Rift Valley and become a new ocean, and that part of East Africa will become its separate small continent. 
Reports show that although the rift is obvious to the eyes, it is not growing fast enough for there to be a complete rift right now. It's growing apart at about a quarter of an inch every year. Ken McDonald further says that the rifting right now is very slow, about the rate that one's toenails grow. But how do these rifts form? Why is it still the subject of debate among geologists and geophysicists? One popular model has assumed dominance. The assumption is that there is an increase in the heat flow coming from deep inside the earth, and this is causing what is called thermal bulges that can be seen in central Kenya and the Afar region of north-central Ethiopia. These bulges are easily identifiable on any topographic map as elevated highlands. As these bulges form, they stretch and fracture the outer brittle crust into a series of normal faults. Bulges, for most geologists and geophysicists, are caused by the heat exerted on the Earth's crust by mantle plumes that are under the continent. A mantle plume is an area under the Earth's crust where magma is hotter than surrounding magma. The heat from this extra hot magma causes the melting and thinning of the overlying crust, which causes the bulges to expand and fracture. This could also lead to widespread volcanic activity on Earth's surface above the plume. Usually, the stretching of the thermal bulges is often preceded by huge volcanic eruptions that flow over large areas. These eruptions often are exposed on the edges of the rift. Some geologists refer to these eruptions as flood basalts. In this kind of eruption, the lava erupts from along the fractures of the bulges instead of erupting at individual volcanoes. The lava then runs over the land as though it is water during a flood. One feature that is obvious in the ongoing rift in Africa is the presence of a rift valley. A rift valley is a lowland region that is formed when two tectonic plates move apart or rift. Rift valleys are often found on land and at the bottom of the ocean. In the ocean, they are created by the process of seafloor spreading. Rift valleys are different from river valleys and glacial valleys in that they are created by the movement of tectonic plates and not the process of erosion. Many rift valleys are part of triple junctions. This happens when three tectonic plates meet at about 120 degree angles. When this happens, two arms of the triple junction often split to form an entire ocean. The third arm, a failed rift sometimes called an olacogon, may become a rift valley. An example of this is the Atlantic Ocean. Sometimes rift valleys can also be found underwater. These often divide long mountain ranges and are called mid-ocean ridges. This is formed when tectonic plates move apart from each other at mid-ocean ridges. Magma from the mantle swells up and hardens as it contacts the frigid sea, forming a new oceanic crust at the bottom of the rift valley. In the northern mid-Atlantic ridge, the North American plate and the Eurasian plate are splitting apart at a rate of about one inch per year. Over tens of millions of years, the Mid-Atlantic Ridge has formed rift valleys as wide as 9 miles. In the Pacific Ocean, the East Pacific Rise has created rift valleys where the Pacific Plate is separating from the North American Plate, Cocos Plate, Nazca Plate, and Antarctic Plate. Typical of many underwater rift valleys, the East Pacific Rise is spotted with hydrothermal vents. These vents are created by geologic activities underneath the underwater rift valley, causing superheated water and fluids to be released into the water body. A rift valley close by and similar to the East African Rift is the Great Rift Valley. The Great Rift Valley is arguably the most well-known rift valley on the planet. This rift valley stretches from the Middle East in the north to Mozambique in the south. The Great Rift Valley is well known for its being geologically active, with volcanoes, hot springs, geysers, and frequent earthquakes. The East African Rift has two main branches, the Western Rift and the Gregory Rift. These two rift valleys are dotted by volcanoes, from the Erta Ale in Ethiopia to Mount Kenya in Kenya, although it is now an extinct stratovolcano. Other spotted volcanoes include Ol Duengyo Langai in Tanzania, Mount Kilimanjaro in Tanzania, which is a dormant stratovolcano, and Mount Nyiragongo in the Democratic Republic of Congo. The Western Rift, also known as the Albertine Rift or the Lake Albert Rift, contains the East African Great Lakes. The Western Rift is one of the most biodiverse areas in Africa. Its features include snow-capped mountains, savannas, highland forests, and a couple of exotic lakes. 
On the other hand, the Gregory Rift, named after the geologist who first mapped it, stretches from the Red Sea and the Arabian Sea downward to Mount Kilimanjaro. One of the most important features of the Gregory Rift is the Afar Triple Junction. The Afar Triple Junction is where the Horn of Africa straddles the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden in the Arabian Sea. At this junction, the Arabian Plate, Nubian Plate, and Somali Plate are all moving away from each other. What is noticeable is that the two arms of the Afar Triple Junction continue to widen through the process of seafloor spreading. One of the arms is extending into the Red Sea, and the other is extending into the Gulf of Aden. As these rifts continue, the tiny valley created by the Gregory Rift could get so depressed that the Arabian Sea floods it. If this happens, this new strait, the Horn of Africa, would become a continental island, just like Madagascar or New Zealand. An interesting thing to note about the East African Rift is that although the same process developed both the Western and Gregory branches, they actually do have very different characters. In the Gregory Rift, what we see is greater volcanic activity, while the Western Rift has much deeper basins that have large lakes and plenty of sediments. One of these lakes is Lake Tanganyika, which is the second deepest lake in the world. Another is Lake Malawi. With basalt eruptions and active crevice formation being observed, geologists have recently had to observe the East African Rift System to see how ocean basins form on land. This is an exciting thing for scientists as it gives them an opportunity to directly study how rifts work. This is an opportunity that they can't get anywhere else in the world, as most rifts have progressed till they are filled with sediments or are underwater. The East African Rift System, on the other hand, is an excellent field laboratory to study a modern, actively developing rift system. Lakes are also many times one of the features of a rift valley system. Rift lakes are formed when fresh water fills up a rift valley. An example of one such formation is when the North American plate began to rift over a billion years ago. As the rifting continued, a triple junction was formed, which eventually led to the formation of the Great Lakes. A mantle plume is an area under the Earth's crust where magma is hotter than surrounding magma. The heat from this extra-hot magma causes the melting and thinning of the overlying crust, which causes the bulges to expand and fracture. This could also lead to widespread volcanic activity on Earth's surface above the plume. Usually, the stretching of the thermal bulges is often preceded by huge volcanic eruptions that flow over large areas. These eruptions often are exposed on the edges of the rift. Some geologists refer to these eruptions as flood basalts. In this kind of eruption, the lava erupts from along the fractures of the bulges instead of erupting at individual volcanoes. The lava then runs over the land as though it is water during a flood. One feature that is obvious in the ongoing rift in Africa is the presence of a rift valley. A rift valley is a lowland region that is formed when two tectonic plates move apart or rift. Rift valleys are often found on land and at the bottom of the ocean. In the ocean, they are created by the process of seafloor spreading. Rift valleys are different from river valleys and glacial valleys in that they are created by the movement of tectonic plates and not the process of erosion. Many rift valleys are part of triple junctions. This happens when three tectonic plates meet at about 120 degree angles. When this happens, two arms of the triple junction often split to form an entire ocean, and the third arm, a failed rift, sometimes called an olicogen, may become a rift valley. An example of this is the Atlantic Ocean. The Atlantic Ocean is a result of a triple junction that started in what is now the Gulf of Guinea on the west coast of Africa. Two arms of a triple junction on the supercontinent Pangaea created the ocean, while the Olicogen formed the rift valley known as the Bainway Trough through what is now southern Nigeria. Sometimes rift valleys can also be found underwater. These often divide long mountain ranges and are called mid-ocean ridges. This is formed when tectonic plates move apart from each other at mid-ocean ridges. Magma from the mantle swells up and hardens as it contacts the frigid sea, forming a new oceanic crust at the bottom of the rift valley. In the northern mid-Atlantic ridge, the North American plate and the Eurasian plate are splitting apart at a rate of about one inch per year. Over tens of millions of years, the mid-Atlantic ridge has formed rift valleys as wide as nine miles. 
In the Pacific Ocean, the East Pacific rise has created rift valleys where the Pacific Plate is separating from the North American Plate, Cocos Plate, Nazca Plate, and Antarctic Plate. Typical of many underwater rift valleys, the East Pacific rise is spotted with hydrothermal vents. These vents are created by geologic activities underneath the underwater rift valley, causing superheated water and fluids to be released into the water body. A rift valley close by and similar to the East African Rift is the Great Rift Valley. The Great Rift Valley is arguably the most well-known rift valley on the planet. This rift valley stretches from the Middle East in the north to Mozambique in the south. The Great Rift Valley is well known for its being geologically active with volcanoes, hot springs, geysers, and frequent earthquakes. The East African Rift has two main branches, the Western Rift and the Gregory Rift. These two rift valleys are dotted by volcanoes from the Erta Ale in Ethiopia to Mount Kenya in Kenya, although it is now an extinct stratovolcano. Other spotted volcanoes include Ol Duengyo Langai in Tanzania, Mount Kilimanjaro in Tanzania, which is a dormant stratovolcano, and Mount Nyiragongo in the Democratic Republic of Congo. The Western Rift is also known as the Albertine Rift or the Lake Albert Rift, and it contains the East African Great Lakes. The Western Rift is one of the most biodiverse areas in Africa. Its features include snow-capped mountains, savannas, highland forests, and a couple of exotic lakes. On the other hand, the Gregory Rift, named after the geologist who first mapped it, stretches from the Red Sea and the Arabian Sea downward to Mount Kilimanjaro. One of the most important features of the Gregory Rift is the Afar Triple Junction. The Afar Triple Junction is where the Horn of Africa straddles the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden in the Arabian Sea. At this junction, the Arabian Plate, Nubian Plate, and Somali Plate are all moving away from each other. What is noticeable is that the two arms of the Afar Triple Junction continue to widen through the process of seafloor spreading. One of the arms is extending into the Red Sea, and the other is extending into the Gulf of Aden. As these rifts continue, the tiny valley created by the Gregory Rift could get so depressed that the Arabian Sea floods it. If this happens, this new strait, the Horn of Africa, would become a continental island just like Madagascar or New Zealand. An interesting thing to note about the East African Rift is that although the same process developed both the Western and Gregory branches, they actually do have very different characters. In the Gregory Rift, what we see is greater volcanic activity, while the Western Rift has much deeper basins that have large lakes and plenty of sediments. One of these lakes is Lake Tanganyika, which is the second deepest lake in the world. Another is Lake Malawi, with basalt eruptions and active crevice formation being observed. Geologists have recently had to observe the East African Rift System to see how ocean basins form on land. This is an exciting thing for scientists as it gives them an opportunity to directly study how rifts work. This is an opportunity that they can't get anywhere else in the world, as most rifts have progressed till they are filled with sediments or are underwater. The East African Rift System, on the other hand, is an excellent field laboratory to study a modern, actively developing rift system. Lakes are also many times one of the features of a rift valley system. Rift lakes are formed when fresh water fills up a rift valley. An example of one such formation is when the North American Plate, 